Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we are going to do the TiVo Flash. You might be saying, hey, you did the TiVo Flash already. Yes, I did. I did the high-end model with the BL Touch all assembled and stuff. This is the base model that they had on pre-order special for $236. Now it's like $320. But this is the base model that includes no upgrades or extras, so we're going to play with that. Stay tuned. Alrighty, so we are going to begin assembly soon. The printer is in pieces, literally. So here's all the pieces. And we are going to have to put it together. This is the 50% assembled version. So the base is built, but nothing else is built. You have to build everything else. Although, it does come in assemblies. So this is your hot end carriage, which is mostly assembled. This is your vertical trolley assembly, which is mostly assembled. So a lot of it's assembled. You'll have to install your extruder unit onto the um, carriage and whatnot. So I'm going to follow the directions and see where it takes us. Hey TiVo, how about being a little less pain in the ass with the freaking wrap around the rod? Jeez, I've been at it for like six or seven minutes right now and I'm still not done getting the freaking plastic off this rod. <laughs> Alrighty, I have tightened up the eccentric nuts on the bed so now there's no wobble. Not too tight. I've also adjusted the eccentric nuts on the right hand trolley so it's nice and smooth without too much resistance. I've also adjusted the eccentric nuts on the left-hand trolley, so it moves nice and freely. Actually, I think that one's still a little too tight. I'm going to loosen that one up a little more. Also on my end, these need to be tightened up. They, these bolts are different. They are not for tightening this. They're for tightening this. Um, so you put a wrench on this side and a, the other wrench on the other side, and you tighten them up just a little bit. Uh, but now that is on there, and it does not jiggle. I do like that they have these pressed-in connections for the bolts for the... X arm, that's nice because that should be more rigid than the Ender 3 setup. So I wish Creality would do something like that. This one's actually adjustable, but it can't be adjusted. There's hammer nuts that hold that on. That's an interesting way of doing it. And the top brace installed, vertical gantries installed from the bottom, from bags A01 for the top and A02 for the bottom. Alrighty, two bolts go into pressed in aluminum. Um, screw sockets on this bracket here, hammer nuts on this end here. This moves up nice and free now. Do be careful, I stripped this one. And the bolt didn't strip. I think I stripped the aluminum mount out of the aluminum frame. So be careful tightening these. I was able to tighten that one nice and tight, no problem. But this one here stripped and I didn't even put that much force on it. So something's up there. I don't want to take it apart to see. But I think it looks like it's a hex nut on the back that's pressed into a hex hole in the red plate. My guess is the aluminum hex press stripped. We're going to install the top bracket on the top of the printer here to guide the Z-Rod. But I'm going to get rid of this bearing. Because that bearing is bad news and it's just going to give you issues with your prints. So the first thing I do is just take these screws out. And take that bearing out. You don't need it, and it's just going to make your prints worse. Pop the screws out, pop the bearing out, then go ahead and install that bracket. Z motor drive unit is installed, so the stepper motor plugged in, the two hammer nuts into the frame rail, the um, coupler installed. Make sure to have the coupler lifted up enough that the two rods don't touch inside, because then this won't be able to flex properly. Um, make sure one of the lead, the grub screws is on the flat of the shaft on the motor. If you look at the shaft of your stepper motor, one edge is machine flat. And then install your Z-Rod through here. Make sure this is up off the print bed and tighten up the grub screws on that. To maximize the stability of your bed leveling is to tighten these wing nuts, these screws, all the way down. So you want the springs fully compressed. But you can't quite do that on the, on the flash because... If you have it too tight, these screws right here that go through the bed will actually hit the belt. So you have to raise it up enough that it does not touch this belt when you move it back and forth. Then what you do is you adjust your, your gantry here like this by grabbing the nut on the back and adjust it until it's just off the bed, like one or two millimeters. Okay, Then get all four corners approximately like that. Once you have it like that and you verify this does not touch the belt, and what you do is you loosen up your Z end stop here and you raise it up until it touches the frame of the bracket right there, just like that. 
and now I've got my Z stop at the lowest point it can be without the screws touching the belt and that will keep those springs under maximum compression makes it a little bit harder to turn them so you'll have a tough time turning them but the result will be a much more stable bed level it won't drift on you and it won't change on you extruder installs with three bolts through the extruder through the plate into the stepper motor I have the wire coming out this end I put the Bowden tube in I shortened the Bowden tube it was too long I don't know where the piece I cut off is. Probably fell on the floor, but I cut off about that much. Basically, make sure this can go all the way to the end without straining, and that's fine. And then I, there's also a hole right here in the frame that I zip tied the extruder wires to so they don't go anywhere that I don't want them to go. And we should be good to go. So we are almost ready. Word of caution, you have to install the belt yourself. Um, it's the kind where you fold the belt over the hook on the back here, and then you put two zip ties on it. This one has to be cropped tight. So make your belt loop nice and tight with a very short tail on it, because otherwise, here is your end stop. When this comes in, you have to make sure this belt piece and these bits of zip tie don't hit the wheel, or it won't allow your printer to meet the end stop properly. So just a word of caution there. And unlike the Creality printers, the belt goes inside the bottom rail here and on the bottom. It does not go over the top like it does on the Creality printers. So if you're having trouble printing on glass, can't get the parts off, or more correctly, you don't want to wait until they cool down. That's on there good because this is still hot. Very, very simple. Just get some alcohol. Spray it on there. Blow it underneath the parts. Then tap. There you go. Parts come right off. There you go. That easy. Easy peasy, yummy squeezy. Parts pop right off. No damage. Takes almost no force. This isn't even sharp. You're just basically shocking it by tap tap on the part. And then, of course, don't forget since this is glass, you need to wipe it down spotless with the alcohol. I use 91% because if there's any oil or dirt on here the next print will not stick. That's it. That's all you have to do. You're now ready to print again. And there's your part. Comes off perfectly like nothing was holding it on. Come on. Boy, this is not happy. There we go. Comes off perfectly just like that. Look at that glassy finish. Yeah. That's that tangerine orange from Protopasta. It came in the latest UFO box. It's the last of my sample. All I have is what's left in the Bowden tube. Very nice. I made a big one. And a little one. I made a Marvin. And I also printed an Astrolabicon, which is coming soon. All with a sample that came with the UFO box. Pretty cool.